clean air, the clean water, the solid waste, biodiversity, and several other environmental laws as congressmen. So um, the combination of both education, uh, and we can talk about that in greater detail, but also really the preservation of ecosystems in this country, especially my beloved Mindanao. So E and E, essentially. E. Education and environment. Okay, very good. You still have two minutes. Oh. See, <laughs> I'm not. The, he's just. <laughs> I'm going to have to get the remaining. <laughs> <laughs> time. It's up to you anyway. Okay. My name is Martin Bautista. I'm the only physician <coughs> running for the Senate, and my candidacy is anchored on the assumption that the status quo in our country has become unacceptable, and we need nothing less than peaceful, revolutionary, transformative change. Meaning to say, I propose to slash the infrastructure budget by 90% and enable us to double all salaries of teachers, doctors, uh, nurses, barangay health workers, soldiers, and policemen. Recognizing that our greatest resource is not Mount Mayon or the Banao Rice Terraces, but the Filipino. And that we have to invest in our youth insofar as healthcare is concerned, education is concerned, under peaceful conditions that will enable our teachers to live a decent life without having to resort to selling life plans, Tocino and Tapa. Our cops will not have to resort to extortion. And this would be the most effective way of pump priming the economy because these public servants will not salt their wages to some other country, but instead spend it in the nearest market, in the nearest drugstore, in the nearest tourist destination. But it will, once and for all, show that we are totally committed to investing in our youth in order to make them competitive in the 21st century. As I said, it's anchored on the fundamental principle that whatever it is we have been doing over the last 50 years has not worked, and we have to put <coughs> novel ideas that will get us out of this mess. Yes, uh, good evening, I'm T.G. Vingona. Uh, <clears throat> all, all government plans and programs start with the budget, and I'm committed to reforming the budget process. First, making it understandable. It's too, it's too much, there's a lot of Greek in the budget, so much so that ordinary citizens cannot understand. We should make it understandable to all. Second, we must make it transparent, um, too much secrecy, too much uh, non-information for the ordinary citizen. It is subject to abuse and right now it is a one big petty cash fund of the of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. It should not be, there should be no secrets, so there must be transparency. Uh, then there must be accountability because uh, what's happening now is people are spending left and right and violating the law and yet there is no accountability and third is people's fourth is people's participation uh, too much is left to those who are in power and those who are greatly affected by how the government spends their money uh, in reality is not consulted so understandability transparency accountability and people's participation in the budget process well, I'm, I'm looking at the welfare of the Filipino family. Um, on the legislative side, uh, we're, we're, I'd like to focus on providing the environment and policy, the policy environment for the promotion of um, livelihood, education, and health. Because I view uh, public service uh, as the same as being a parent taking care of the basic needs of his own family. And as a father myself, uh, I, I draw upon that kind of principle in serving the people and uh, looking after the welfare of the basic needs of the Philippine family. On the advocacy <coughs> side, uh, I, I would like to uh, push as a figure in national politics the return to the basic Filipino values and strengthening the Filipino family. Uh, because after all, it is a basic unit of our society. And uh, I, I just I simply believe that a lot of the problems of this country is rooted upon uh, the deterioration of family values. Um, no, I'll just go back again later. After. Who, can, who wants to ask the next question? 
genetic, right? So yeah. two yeah. minutes again. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a round table and do a follow-up. Carlo, I'll play. Uh, I'll ask my favorite question mm -hmm. for, for male candidates. Um, other than the airplane of uh, the U.S., have you ever heard of a place called Air Force One? Uh, and if ever yes, uh, what do you do? What do, are you planning to do uh, about places like those uh, in the Philippines, being pro proliferating in the Philippines? Yes, I've heard of the place because it's near my district. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not in my district. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm proud to say I've never been inside Air Force One. And I don't have any intention of going inside Air Force One. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, my advocacy is the return to traditional Filipino values. So I would do anything in within the power of a legislator, national legislator, to not stop, at least try to control the proliferation of such establishments. I'm proud to say that in my district there is no such kind of establishment. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we have to make sure that the laws are followed and uh, those establishments are really more of the local government, as I understand, local government uh, regulations. Uh, however, uh, if there are any, any national laws violated, then we should we should uh, we should in, in enforce the laws. Um, a lot of our problems really come from um, <coughs> non-implementation of the laws, whether local or national. In as much as I would have wanted to sample the. <laughs> 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 services of Air Force One. I have never been to Air Force One. I'm a proud father of five daughters. And I always make it a point to make sure that our women are treated with respect. But unfortunately, Air Force One is a reflection of our society's... Oh boy, it's, it's, it's also in bad shape. And a lot of these women have to resort to prostitution in order to allow them to make a living and that is a reality but you do have to understand that we have a lot of poverty in our country because of so much corruption and so much injustice and i trace this back to the original sin when we allowed a dictator like marcos to get to 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 get away with stealing so much money in our country as a matter of fact, he was named as the Guinness Book of World Records greatest plunderer in history. And yet, was he ever punished? How am I to know that Bong Bong Marcos, who will probably become a senator in about, th three, in about two months, did not dig a hole in 1986 before they were ingloriously exiled to Hawaii, put all the money there, and he's now putting all his ads based on those treasures that he hid in 1986. The point being, as a country, we have to make sure that justice is served. That we have to understand that that form of corruption is a form of corruption that kills <coughs> people, that deprives people of education and health care, and the corresponding punishment has to be served. Well, I, I, don't, I don't want to answer this in any way that leads into some kind of a moral judgment or a religious predilection, but I'd like to say, however, that it, it, it does need uh, forms of regulation one way or another, um, establishments such as Air Force One, uh, but have to do largely with the local governments because that is still within the purview of uh, what can be regulated. I don't think it, it, we can call it uh, 